Hey guys, I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on how to import GPS data of uh, two very common standards into Quantum GIS. So uh, the first thing we're going to look at is um, the GPX format, uh, GPS exchange format. This is going to commonly come from uh, standard recreational GPS units like uh, Garmin E-Trex, um, like uh, Magellan units, or uh, um, more advanced Trimble units if you have access to those, but um, they Trimble units tend to be able to output shape files as well. But um, GPX is just a very simple portable format that uh, can pretty easily be brought into Quantum GIS. So uh, I've got just some state boundaries here, and uh, there's a GPX file I've got for trail intersections on the um, uh, the Vermont State um, Snowmobile Trail Network. So here's the GPX file. Uh, now you notice you're adding this as a vector layer, but when you hit open, it gives you a bunch of options because there are a few nested vector layers within this. Um, it's possible that it could be any one of these, but the easiest way to look for the, the right layer is number of features. This column here, you can see only one of these, the uh, waypoints layer has 886 features in it. Uh, so when you hit OK, it drops it in. Uh, natively, it's usually in latitude and longitude, uh, you know, standard WGS84 projection. So uh, it should work very easily with any anything else you have in there, as long as you've got reproject on the fly turned on. Um, again, that's up here under options with enable on the fly reprojection by default. So the one thing you need to do before you really work with this and save this, this file is turn this into a feature class of its own, because right now it's just pulling from a part of that GPX file. And the way you do that is right click on the waypoints in the table of contents, hit save as, and then we'll save this as an Esri shape file. So we'll just call this vast points. Save it as a shape file. Uh, you can see it's using WGS84, which is just fine for this sort of thing. And then we can remove this one, add our new shape file. And now this is fully usable in Quantum GIS for geoprocessing, for symbolizing, for all of the above. There's a certain amount of that that you can do with the original GPX file, but it just is easier and better for long-term file planning to turn this into a file of its own. So for the next, we're going <coughs> to try importing a uh, table of points, which uh, this is another common GPS output. Uh, you'll also see it in you know scientific journals and uh, just in a general way that people want to publish their data, which is just in the form of a table uh, that has latitude and longitude attached to it. So here I have a table of, uh, these are actually um, tweets sent from particular locations in Vermont during Hurricane Irene a few years back. Uh, but you can see there's latitude and longitude. These are just part of the, the Twitter API output. But uh, there are a bunch of other ways that you would you would get this into latitude and longitude form in these columns. But this just happens to have it already. And if you have a GPS output, it will have that as well. Um, so, so that is a delimited text file uh, or you know spreadsheet table as, more, as it's more commonly known. Um, in order to bring this in, we need to make sure that we have uh, the delimited text file uh, extension actually turned on for QGIS. So we go to Plugins, Manage Plugins, and just make sure that Add Delimited Text Layer is checked on, and in this case it is. So then we'll go to Layer and Add Delimited Text Layer. And this is pretty straightforward. We just add the file. Um, In this case, uh, I have it in what's called a comma-separated values format, or a CSV format, instead of the standard XLS format. XLS should work as well, but CSV is a, a much more of a standard for transferring data and being able to use it between different kinds of programs, so uh, QGIS is much more comfortable with it. Um, you can very easily save a, uh, an Excel file into CSV by just hitting Save As, and then in a drop-down menu, you'll have the option to save it as a CSV. So this, we already have it as a CSV. Uh, you can see our selected delimiters then. It's going to be comma and just comma. Any of the others might sort of mess with it. Uh, it looks for X and Y fields. Uh, you can see we have the option of all the fields that are in there, but we're just going to choose the one that is longitude and the Y field up and down is latitude. 
Um, you can ignore WKT, regular expressions, plain characters, that's all more than we need. And then you can see we've got a preview of the table, and it seems like everything's in the right place. So we'll just hit OK. Then that'll take a little bit. We'll turn off the vast points, and you can see here are all of our geolocated tweets from Hurricane Irene. Now, same as with the GPX file, you'll want to save this as a shapefile just so that you can keep working with it very easily in the future. Finishes the export, can remove that original CSV file, then just add the new tweets shapefile. And everything's in its right place with attributes attached and ready to work with in Quantum GIS. Now, some GPS units, uh, and in particular mobile apps for your smartphone, will uh, increasingly be putting out uh, files from you know your your uh, GPS collection in KML format, which, as we've noted in previous tutorials, is Google's uh, standard interoperable uh, geodata format. Uh, and that has absolutely no bells and whistles about it. It just works in QGIS natively, like a, like a shapefile would. Um, so just to add the KML file that we used in the previous tutorial, just drop it in, and it shows up in the right place uh, in QGIS already supported. Um, you'll probably see some of this data coming out in point format if you use uh, an app like um, MyTracks or any of the Garmin apps, um, but KML is another format that you'll see uh, GPS data output in.